All right, YouTube, guys, girls, older people, younger people, everybody in between, what is going on, you beautiful people? Now we have the laptop, we have the coffee, which is almost done, by the way. We have the mic, and that, guys, is because we're doing another editing video, or how I edited video. Now, as context for you guys, this is of UFC videography. Now, I'm going to link it up above. I recommend you guys check it out for the behind the scenes. It'll make more sense into what this means. But in a nutshell, guys, I've been working with my boxing coach, who is a mixed martial artist, fighter and he's teaching me uh, fighting and what I do for him is I do some video work so this is the third um, client video that we've done for him and this is of like I said UFC so basically as a bit of backstory him and his good buddy Matt choreographed a fight together which um, was in a UFC gym okay so this is a one and a half minute client commercial video that I'm going to show you guys first and then with that we will break it down through the editing process okay so I'll let you guys check it out. Minute and a half. Hope you guys enjoy it. Pretty dope video. And I'll see you guys back here in a sec. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed that minute and a half video. Pretty dope, if I do say so myself. Again, guys, I did link that video up above to get the behind the scenes, okay? And I'm gonna explain why. Normally in these videos, we break it down into three main sections of the editing. That is flow, color grade, and sound design. But because we did a behind the scenes video already explaining the flow, we are just going to be explaining the last two, which is color grade and sound design. So let's get straight to it with color grade. All right, guys. So as you guys know, I use LUTs from a guy named Jacob Owens. They're always linked down below and there is a discount code for you guys. I'm not affiliated or sponsored by them, so I'm not telling you guys to buy them. It's just what I use. And for those of you guys who don't want to purchase them, completely understandable, I have replicated the LUT for you guys completely free, so you don't have to buy anything. You can just, you know, do as I do, and then you'll achieve that look. So with that said, let's get to it. This is, uh, the LUT is called JOP LUT 1. It is on 50% intensity, and here is without the LUT, before, after, before, after. So already from looking at it visually, the um, shadows are brought down. Maybe the mid-tones a little bit. It's definitely a bit darker. There's maybe some orange in the highlights, teals in the shadows, and it's just naturally a bit warmer of a uh, of a LUT. Okay, so there is that LUT, and now here's my replication of it, which is not exact, because again, I don't know exactly what I did, but I try my best. So there's that LUT, and there's mine. There's mine. There's mine. There's mine, which is almost identical. I might like mine better, so that one, mine. There's mine. There there's mine, there's mine. Maybe the highlights are a little bit brighter on that one. But anyways, if you guys want to know how to achieve this look that you saw in the video, here is how you do so, okay? So that being said, regardless if you guys are using Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, you can, you know, you can edit it uh, regardless. It's a universal way of doing so. So first off, we have brought the saturation up. That is just to make everything pop. 
We've brought the shadows down like I told you guys. That is to keep it nice and dark and richer and moodier. Then what we did where the real magic happened was we put some oranges in the highlights to give it that nice orange warm look. And we put some teals or blues in the shadows to give it that nice color contrast of teal and orange. Then what I did is I just slightly warmed up the image and gave it a very slight pink tint. Okay, so recap guys real quick. The shadows are brought down. There are orange in the highlights, teals in the shadows. The overall saturation is brought up a little bit for an extra punch. And then I just warmed it up a little bit. Now for two other little minute details. Um, that I did to really achieve the look. You don't have to do this. This is kind of just like a cherry on top. That, that's 90% of it. What we did is we used, there we go. We have color curves right here. So I gave it a very basic S curve, like extremely basic being. I brought up the shadows a very little bit, brought down the highlights to give it a more smooth cinematic feel. Again, it was extremely minute. Like here's the before and after of the color curves. Before, after, before after. You don't need to do that. I just tried to replicate the LUT. And then what we have are hue and saturation curves. What I noticed um, the LUT had was the reds were a little bit more muted. So what I did is I simply went to the reds. I brought the overall saturation of the reds down. And then I brought the luminance of the reds down. Again, you don't like that's just nitpicking cherry on the top. Again, I'm just trying to replicate the LUT the, 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 LUT the uh, best I could. So that is how you achieve the look if you guys are interested in this nice contrasted teal and orange vibe, which I thought was beautiful. And again, the LUTs that I've purchased from Jacob, I absolutely love and I recommend them to you guys. So that is it for color grading, guys. I applied that LUT throughout the entire clip that you saw and did very minute details, like maybe added a bit of warmth or brought the shadows down, but the majority of it came from the LUT itself. So that is color grading in a nutshell. That's how I achieved that beautiful look. Now let's move on to the next thing, which is sound design. Okay, so real simple, guys. There's not too much to sound design. As you can see, there is just a one beat track. Excuse me. Um, if you guys are new to these videos, where I get my music from is on YouTube. Simply type in free instrumental type beat. And with that, you will find tons of songs with big, bold letters in the front of the title saying free. With that, generally, they are copyright free. So you can use them in your YouTube videos, vlogs, tutorials, whatever you want. And that's exactly what I did here. So this one is called free Lil, Lil Uzi Vert feet Juice World type beat um, vamp life melodic type beat dark type beat too so if you guys are interested that's where you can search it up um let me play it for you guys and then explain why i used it okay hopefully you guys can hear this So you guys get the point. Now, right off the bat, before we speak of um, anything else in sound design, the song itself is, it's a good song. It's dope. I love it, by the way. But it's very, um, it's interesting, right? It's very interesting. It's very, there's a very high contrast in the song. And that's actually why I love it. You know, with me, myself, the reason I use these certain styles of beats or instrumental beats in and of themselves is usually because they are very melodic and beautiful. So very cinematic. Um, like I said, melodic, very um, almost like silky, almost uh, lush or effortless. And I don't know if these are the right words, if this is making sense, but usually with pianos or harp, it's just very beautiful. It's very melodic. There's, there's a very nice melody, but there's also a very, um, there's, a, there's a big punch to it, right? With the bass, with the hi-hats, it's a beat, guys. You understand that, right? So there's a nice contrast, and that's why I love using beats. That being said, if you guys listen to it in the very first 10 to 15 seconds, it was very grungy. Like, like the mood of it was just these. Again, I'm not, an, I'm not a musician, but like the way it sounded was just extremely grungy. The bass was super deep. You can hear it. It sounds almost like demonic a little bit.
So I really liked that before they got into the fight to really show them mentally and physically through the visuals preparing for this fight. You know, Tristan beating the crap out of a bag to get ready, Matt putting on his wraps, like just instantly from the get-go, you know, okay, this is a fight video, this is not a happy video, this is a grungy, get it done uh visceral thing like this is real okay and then what happened is naturally as they began to actually fight which you would almost think it'd be backwards um it began to get very cinematic and beautiful the music so excuse me i believe it was a piano that's what started to come in Now, I know most people may not like that. They, you know, they, they, maybe they think the opposite, like David, the piano should be in the beginning, and then when they fight, it should get really grungy and dark. For whatever reason, I just really enjoyed this because, like I've told you guys before, fighting to me, at least with choreographed fighting or, or shooting with uh, video in, in fighting, it's an art, right? Fighting is an art form. The way punches are landed or the way they really, it's almost like a dance. And again, I'm not a professional fighter, but when I record it with Tristan, it's very cinematic. Like fighting is very, it honestly is very beautiful. The way punches are thrown, the way you know dodges are, 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 are I guess you know evaded it just looks dope so having that piano having that cinematic um, music or environment while they fight to me is a beautiful it's a beautiful pairing I like that myself so if you've noticed in the beats they've been very melodic but there's also a grunge to it and that was able to grab the audience and let them know this is not a happy video this is a very serious fight style video because if it's too melodic and happy I agree like it won't match the vibe like why are you putting a happy dappy song in a fight video it won't make sense so that grunge in the beginning really held it together so that is why I used that song you don't have to use this song but um that's what I did. So that is really it, guys, with how I edited or achieved that look in that video, as I know some of you guys were wondering from it. So that is it, guys. I'm going to finish that video there. Nice, quick, punchy to the point. I really hope this was able to help you guys um, understand my editing process or why I did certain things or why you would do certain things as a filmmaker or a videographer for clients or commercials or, or really anything that involves a video. Now, I will finish here, guys, with... The most important part in video, hands down by far, in my opinion, is not the editing, it is actually the shooting, it is what is in camera, and that is why, guys, I linked up above beforehand the, um, the behind the scenes with the GoPro. I would recommend you guys check that out because to me, what you capture in camera trumps everything else, right? Your editing is simply just bringing this together, but this comes before this. Does that make sense? If your edit is supposed to save your base or your footage, to me, I think you're screwed because if you're, it's kind of like an ice cream cone. If like your cone and your ice cream is screwed up, no, no amount of sprinkles is going to save that. You know, no amount of chocolate fudge syrup on top is going to save it. Believe me, I worked at an ice cream store for four years. Like I know this stuff. Like if the ice cream's expired, you're screwed, right? So what I'm saying is, is uh, get good ice cream and then get good sprinkles on top. Okay. So that's it guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up, share it like comment all that good stuff and be on the lookout guys for the courses this will be in one out of the four courses we have the commercial course short film course music video course and documentary course so if you guys have liked this video or want to know anything more on those the courses over an hour long each are coming soon to you guys so that is it thank you all again i love you all i will talk to you soon and enjoy the rest of this coffee and with that said much love peace